Uh, welcome to CSRI Chan Kala Seminar, and it's the third seminar of the semester, and it will be the last seminar before the term exam, and uh, there will be some more interesting topics after the term exam. It's um, after the term exam as well. And, uh, as usual, um, the slide and for template are uploaded in the CLRC Today's topic is working with a lot of actions. So, uh, in previous two seminars, we implemented some collections, including this and options by ourselves. And today, uh, we will uh, already implemented given and our our library and compare with compare them with our implementation about how to use them and after that we'll some tiny real world application using this library in Hong Kong. So we're gonna we see this slide again and we already talked about immutability and high order functions in previous two seminars so I don't think I have to explain in detail. So first let's some brief review of previous seminars. In the fourth seminar, we implemented a list. So this is a type, and it has two constructs, new and const. New is the empty list, and const is a pair of an element, in this case integer, and another list. So we can construct, and we find a sequence of integer we want in using this new and const. In the last seminar, we implemented some other functions for this, like map, filter, hold left, hold right. So let's just think again about that. So list map takes two parameters. The first parameter was list, and the second parameter is a function from integer to integer. So the thing this function does is mapping the given function to the app element of the given list and return the list whose app elements are applied to the function. So in this case, we apply the function which increase an integer by one to every element of the list. So calling this map with L and this function inter will be resolved every element of the list is increased by one. And in this case, we are calling this map function with the square function. So in this case, every element of the list should be squared when it is returned. Also, we implement filter function with filter. So it also takes two parameters. The first one is the list, and the second one is predicate, which means it is a function from integer to a boolean. If an element satisfies this predicate, then the resulting list will contain that element. And if the element does not satisfy this predicate, then it will be dropped from the return list. So in the first example, because we are calling this filter function with this function, which is checking the integer is old or not. So Every even element of the list will be dropped, and all the elements are remaining. So this function is calculating the list whose elements are all odd. In the second example, we are calling the function with this function, which checks that the integer is positive or not. So after calling the function, the return list will be will contain positive positive integers, not negative integers, or zero. Also, we implemented this hold right function. So this function takes three parameters. The first one is the list, and the second parameter is an integer, which is a kind of initial or starting value, and the last 
plus parameter in a function, which takes two integer and returns one integer. So what does this function do? So this function uh, do the same kind of append the given initial value at the right side of the list and try to apply this given function from right to the left. So it is it pulls the list from right to the left. So in this case, because the starting value is zero and it will apply this plus function sequentially from right to the left. So it will calculate the sum of every element in the list. And in the second example, uh, zero is changed to one and plus function is changed to product function or three case function. So it will calculate the product of every element in the list. And also we implement a similar version to the list full left function. It does almost same thing to as the list full right function. However, the direction is reversed. So it starts it obtains this initial value at the left side of the list and starts to pull the list from left to the right. So actually because the Plus operator and multiplication operator are all commutative and associative and very good operators, so they will result result the same thing when we use even though we use this this whole left function. So it will calculate the sum of every element in the list and this will calculate the product of every element in the list. So from now on, let's see how we can use to this standard list library is called a collection library. So in the left side is the list which we implemented in the previous seminar, and the right side is the list in the standard, standard call library. So of course, let's see how we can create list. So we use Neo and Hunt, and in Scala it's quite similar. We can use Neo to construct the empty list. However, instead of const, we use this column column operator to make a pair of uh, integer and list. So, and also, in here, we can use this infix operator instead of prefix operator. So it looks more like this and readable. We can construct this like this. So it is empty list, and this is a list containing only zero, and this is a list containing 0 and 1. And also, we can use exactly the same function, list, like this. So we can construct a list which contains 0, 1, and 2. So when we can match the list, uh, we use nil and cons. However, it's called up. When we can the list, we can use nil and its column column operator. So everything is same, but only this part is changed to like this. As like we, as like we construct the list, uh, even though we destruct the list, so we use same same syntax in here. And the other uh, important change is that Scala standard list is parameterized by type, so we can define a list of some arbitrary type. So we implemented a list which is only list of integers, so our list cannot contain the element which is not a list. However, uh, when we use a library, we can construct a list of every type we want. So this list true will be a list of Boolean, and this list string A and string B will be a list of string, and if we use list 0, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 1, and 0 plus 2, then it will be the list of bubbles. And any other thing, we can construct a list of integer, list of functions, list of list of list, list of list, any other things we can make this because this column list is parameterized by type. So because of this reason, uh, when we define a function which takes a list or return a list, now we should uh, say what the 
parameter, high parameter of the state. So in the previous version, which we implemented, we can say just this. However, when we use call library, we should locate this high parameter. So this input function will take a list of integers as a parameter and will return a list of integers. So now let's see how the helper functions are changed in the Scala library. So Scala library offers every function we implemented. However, syntax is a little bit different because Scala is mixed of functional style and object-oriented style. So these helper methods are given in object-oriented style with this style. So we use ma mapping function for this like this. We Make a function named with map. However, in Scala, name of the method is just a map, and we can use this sum notation. So this is exactly the same code, but only syntax is different. So this is mapping increasing one function to every element of this list. Also, uh, in our version, because every list should contain only list, only integer, so we cannot give a function which returns Type, which is not an integer, to as an argument. However, because Scala library can generate a list of arbitrary types, so we can give a function which do not return an integer as a parameter. So in this case, this function takes an integer and returns a boolean. So result of this code will be list of true false false. I already skipped too many codes. Now, as we can expect, the fourth code will return list of two, three, and four, and the second one will return list of Also, uh, we can try something a little bit different. In this case, we want to print every element in the list. So we can use map function like the previous one. However, what will be the return value of this print line function? So print line function um, cannot return any meaningful value. So in a given argument, so it does return unit, which means uh, so type is unit, and in type unit there is only one value, which is empty tuple. And this is uh, the only value of unit type. So we can high check that it's unit and print the result of print element should be unit so because there is no Printed in Ruffle, so we can do something like this. So this returns true. We can check that print line function return this unit. Beautiful. So actually, in mapping this print line function to the list, not me, uh, I actually print all the things, but however, it will generate some meaningless list which contains three units. So Instead of using this mapping function, we can use for each function. So in this case, it does exactly the same thing as the map function does, but however, it does discard the return value of the function, so the meaningless list will not be created, so it should be more efficient. So this is the code, and I will run this. In the upper part, it is a result of map function, so it constructs list of three units, so if this list is not useful. However, when we use for each function, it does print and not create anything. 
And the other useful function is plot map. So plot map is quite similar to map, but it does some additional things. So when uh, the result of mapping returns some collection, like this, then plot map will flatten the resulting list. So in this case, uh, the given function uh, takes one integer and returns a list of integers. So if we map this function to the list, then it will contain three lists in the list. So it will be a list of list of one and list of two and list of three. However, in this case, we use plan map. So after uh, obtaining the return value, it will flatten the list. So every single element from the list will come out from this internal list and on the return list will not be some multi-dimensional list, it is just flattened to one dimensional list. And the second example is mapping this function. So one, two, n is will return the collection of integers from one to n, as we say. It will contain one, two, three, four, plus 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 n. So this function and this code will result list of one and one and two and one and two and three. So it will be a single dimensional list, not a multi dimensional list because we use plan map. This is the code. And when we run this code, the first code return list of one, two, and three, and the second code. Return one and uh, one, one, two, one, two, and three. Uh, Scala library offers filter function as well. So, however, in this case, because filter should take a predicate as an argument, so the return value of the function should be boolean. However, uh, this can be parameterized by type, so its type, parameter type of the function can be another thing. So in the fourth code, we just simply populate the list of all the elements, and in this case, we are trying to drop the string, whose length is not one, and keeping only the string whose length is one. This is a code, and we can run this. So as we expected, the first list contains only all the, all the elements, one and three, and the second list contains only eight because the other two strings are lengths of zero and two. Also, uh, in library, there is a for drive function. So the syntax is not different, however, it is similar. The list and dot and full right and the initial value and so this is curried um, so and it, you can just um, yeah, write the code like this the fourth argument and it is um, distinguished by one more parenthesis and the second argument is the function so it is the same thing and calculate the sum of the every element of the list so it will return six. And also in Scala library, it offers more beautiful syntax like this. We can, so these two codes are the exactly same one, and it implies that we will append zero, which is the initial value, to the byte size of the list and apply this function. So these two codes also called six. For function, they will be like this. So, in the last seminar, we said that we cannot uh, implement add back or contamination function using this old drive because this old drive is not parameterized by type, by type. So, we should implement old drive for the list. However, the um, standard library. Is parameterized by type, so we can 
use list or any other arbitrary type as an argument. So this code will calculate the new list, which is append four at the back of the list. So the result will be the list of one, two, three, and four. So it up append the list of four at the right side of the list and then calculate this one. So it will be console three and four. So list of three and four will be constructed and then it will calculate the console two and three and four. So the list will be two, three, and four. And finally, it will calculate the list of one, two, three, and four. So this, this code will result with one, two, three, and four. So four is added at the back of the list. Then as, as the previous slide, we can write the same code use this syntax. Now, as we expected, the result of the code is the list of one, two, three, and four. Four plus six. Also, uh, fold left is available too. So we can, it's almost safe, but this is initial value, which is appended at, at the left side of the list, and the function will be applied to the list, uh, to the element. And this will calculate the product of every element in the list. And it is more intuitive because in this time, the initial element one is appended to the left side of the list. And it'll, it'll be the function will be applied from the left to the right. So, we have this packet, and the return value is this. Also, uh, we can not implement the reverse function by using this whole left function because it is not determined by, by type. However, because full lab function is from a type type, so we can uh, use some list or other types as an argument. So this code will calculate the reverse of the given list. So this empty list is appended at the left side of the list. And of course, it will calculate the list of one, and then it will calculate the list of two and one, and then it will calculate the list of three and two and one. So calculate the reverse list. And yeah, this is the same code using another syntax. So we can run the code to check that. Ah, so this works correctly and we return the list of three to n one, which is reversal list of one to n three. Also, Scala library offers some helpful functions. So, this colon plus operator append the single element at the, at the end of the list. So, this will result one, two, three, and four. And also, this plus plus operator append two lists. So, this code will result list of one, two, three, four, five, and six. example. So it's quite intuitive. This calculates the length of the list and this calculates the reverse of the list. So it will result three and it will result three to n one. It's already appeared in this case. So until now I mm, introduced some basic methods in the list library and there are many other very helpful methods in this library, so if you are interesting, interested, then you can go to this documentation page and check other functions exist in the library. We implemented option type in the last seminar as well. So option is used to handle some erroneous case functionally. When the calculation is terminated successfully, then it will result some value, and 
by using some constructor, we will create some value. So it implies that the calculation succeeds. However, if there is some error and the calculation is terminated abnormally, then we will return none, which implies error happened and nothing meaningful value is calculated. So in option there we implemented some helper functions like get or else. So option get or else takes some option as a first parameter and the default integer value as a second parameter. So if the given option is some value, then it does extract the given value and return the integer. However, if the given value is null, then it means some error happened and does return the default value. This is a function from option to integer. And using this option get or else function, we can implement list get or else function. So list, uh, yeah, list get option function returns some value if index is valid. And if index is invalid, it returns none. And by calling this option get or else function the default value, we can obtain some value, so i value if i is valid index, and default value if index is invalid. We implemented option map function in the last seminar. Option map map the given function into the value inside the sum if the given option is some value. So if operation succeeds, then we proceed to the next calculation. However, if the given option value is not, then the previous calculation already failed, so we do not have to do the next thing, so it just terminates by returning none. So in this case, uh, if the index is valid, then it will return some of i's listed elements, and the result, is, result will be paired value, and if the index is invalid, it will return none, and pair is not calculated, just none is returned. Also, we uh, implemented option plan map function, so it is similar to the previous option map function, however, it's different because this given function also can have an error or result error not thing. So this function is integer from option, and if the first argument is none, and then the total result will be just none. And if this is some value, then this function will be applied to this function at this value. However, an error can happen, and if error happens, then this function will be turned on. So the uh, overall result will be none. And however, if this function terminated successfully, then some value will be returned, which means both calculations of it. So, because uh, as in list, um, we so think about list. Then the empty list is only the empty list. So nil is object. So as like in the list, for option, some value can be some value. So it shouldn't be class. However, none is double non. And so meaningless value cannot be multiple value. So it is the only one non value. So we define non as object, not class. Is enough explanation? And so from now on, let's compare the option we implemented and option in standard Hello library. So it looks exactly the same. We can construct non 
moving on and construct some value with some things. Exactly the same. Also, uh, we can factor match the option value by using exactly the same syntax by taking on and some value. However, like the list, option also is parametric, parametrized by type, so we can construct option of arbitrary type. Uh, our option of our version can take only integer, however, in standard library, we can construct some of boolean, some of string, some of double, some of some function, some of some of some, some of option, some, some of list, any other thing we can calculate, and we can construct optional arbitrary type. Uh, we implemented option get of function and like this we can use this object oriented style to call get of function of option type. So, this will result zero because this is not none, so this one is not considered, and zero is just returned. However, if this is none, then one will be returned to the default value. Also, this will result two because some two is not none. So we can run this code to check. Returns zero, and if it is none, it returns one. It returns two. If it is none, it returns one. Also, we can use map function in object oriented style. So it will it will result some zero because you know, zero times zero is zero, and it is not none. If this is none, then it will be none. Also, this will be sum of string zero and if this is none, then this one will be none. So we can run this code. So the first one is sum zero, and if it is none, none. If it is, so this one is sum of string zero, and it is not, it looks like string, but it is string. And if it is none, then it will be none. We can use flama function in object-oriented oriented style as well. So this is the definition of the 100 state function. And if we flama with zero, then some zero is some value. However, uh, dividing 100 by zero will uh, result an error. So this will be non. And uh, dividing 100 by one will result one. So this will result the sum of 100. And this is none, so calculation does not happen, and just none is directly returned. So the first one is none, second one is some hundred, and the last one is none again. So we implemented this get function, which get the i element of the list. In Scala library, we do not use get function. We can just directly apply the index to the list. So uh, it is quite surprising. In Scala, we can use list as a function. Actually, uh, we can type check list as a function. And if another function takes a function from integer to integer as a parameter, then we can pass this in list as a parameter. So of course, um, usually we do not those things, but it is possible. This will return zero element, and if index is invalid, it will throw an exception. Also, uh, there is a get option version in this in standard library. There is a typo. This should be list get instead of list get option. So we can implement list get option function as by using list and list get function. So like that, if we list this Aronos function, then it will be some state function, which returns some value if index is valid, and none if index is invalid. So 
must find it. So, so it is valid, it is invalid, it is valid, it's invalid, and if these two lines try to type check the list and list a list to some function. <coughs> So as you can see, the first one successfully resolved one. However, the second one draws an exception, which is index of minus one. And when we list the function, then it will return some one or none. And both function, and both list and list dot list is some function. Also, we can see. Uh, uh, so let's see the lambda function again. Then I said that lambda function uh, gets a parameter which is function from element to some collection. So actually we can say that option is some collection whose length or size is zero or one. So non is collection of zero length and some value is collection of length one. So we can flatten the result of option. So if option is some value, then we extract the value from the option and it will put the the value the value to the list and if the resulting value is none then it will be just this part. So in this case we plan map this the hundred same function to a list of zero, one and two. So applying this one hundred say to zero will result in none. So none will be just discarded, and when we apply this function to one or two, then it will return sum of 100 and sum of 50, and sum goes away, and the resulting list will contain just 150. So we can run this code. As we, as we expect it, the Return value contains 150. None is discarded and some goes away. So and there are many other useful functions for option type also. And you can find those functions if you are interested in documentation. So let's move on to for loop in Scala. So unlike while, which is very imperative, in Scala. For is not the imperative style and is actually quite functional style. So this so, uh, Scala for syntax is a little bit different from other languages. So it's almost similar to Python style and for each in Java or C sharp or also other other languages. So this and will iterate over this collection, this one, two, and three. So this code will print one, two, and three sequentially. And actually, this code does exactly the same thing as for loop does. So it also prints one, two, and three. Uh, actually, in Scala, these two codes are exactly the same. In com at compile time, compiler com will transform this code into this. So it is not only behaviorally equivalent, it's actually completely equivalent. So we can run this code. It will print one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. So this for loop is color is completely functional, which will be transformed into higher higher order functions and Alpha functions like for each map, one map, or so that's the paper. We can sequence multiple uh, extractor from for for loop. So in this case, we uh, n iterate over this list and n iterate over a one to n for every n. So this code will print one, one, two, one, two, three. And the, this version does the exactly the same thing, and this code is transformed to this at compile time. We can execute the code. Let's 
that's expected, it prints one, one, two, one, two, three, and one, one, two, one, two, three. Also, we can use conditional in for the, you know, in this case, uh, and iterate over in this collection. However, if and it does not satisfy this predicate, then that case it will be skipped. So this will print one and three because two is not odd. And this code is transformed like in uh, to this code a compile time. So it is converted to filter and now yeah, this iteration is converted to orange. So it is completely syntactic. Mark mm -hmm. so it goes here, goes here, and goes here and Two so is not printed, and one and three are printed. And so we can combine both things. We can uh, do multiple iteration and use conditional, and it will print one, one, nine, six, uh, one, one, two, three, because two is not odd, and M will iterate over one to M. As expected. Printed result is one, one, two, and three, one, one, two, and three. Moreover, we can fill some value using for loop. So this code will result list of one, four, nine. So is filled by using this field range construct. We can fill the list, which is a result of iterating in this way. So if this code will transform to this code as compiled by my compiler. So just run this code and see what happens. Post code result list of one, nine, and uh, one, four, and nine instead of print or to compile it back. It just construct a new list. And we can sequence multiple iterator as well. So in this case, the first iterator iteration will be converted to flag map, and the second one will be converted into map. So this will result list of one, one, two, one, two, and three, and this code does exactly the same thing. So like this, so and iterate over this one, and and iterate over one to n, and every value of m squared will fill and stored in some collection. So, you know, not one to one, 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 two, one, two, three, it was one, one, four, one, four, nine, because here it is still. Also, we can use conditional too. So, this will convert it like this using filter, flat map, and map. It will result list of one one four nine because two will be drawn. As you can see, both code result list of one one four and nine. So the benefit of for loop is it's quite sometimes it's more readable compared to using this uh, higher order functions class. So, of course, this is not good implementation. However, uh, if multiple higher order functions are nasty, then it will be very hard to read that code sometimes. However, if we use for loop, then we can write the code quite intuitively and can read the code, so it can understand the intention easily. So, so let's see some application. Uh, assume that f is some function from integer to option int, and g takes four integers and returns one integer. So we want to apply function f to four integer, and if every calculation succeeds, so every result is our, uh, all the results are sum, then we will, we will call g. However, one of them is 
non bendable, not forging. Um, how can we write this code? So the, the fourth novel approach is calculate everything and uh, triple it and pass it to the pattern match and check that every result is uh, is sum and if every result is a sum then we will calculate the, uh, we will call the function g and apply it to sum and if more than one or more is non then we will just return none. However, uh, this kind of implementation has clear defect because we should calculate all of it. So if F is very expensive function, then it would be better to terminate the calculation if sum appears to be non. However, uh, in this code, even if F and zero is non, we will calculate every other F and one, F and two, and F and three, so it will be not so efficient. So it will be some better version. We first calculate F and zero and pattern match it. If it is sum, then it, we will calculate the next thing, and next thing, and next thing, and finally we will calculate sum, but this code is not so looking not look so well. Uh, it is quite verbose and hard to read and not so beautiful. Then we can try the code using flaming function. So it is much better than the previous one. However, it is still has some syntactic overhead and quite hard to read. So we can use for loop for this case. So because for loop is simple syntactic transformation and option I offers flatmap and map function. So the, the previous code is exactly the same code with this. However, it is more readable. We calculate f and zero and extract the value and it fails because finish it at this point and and then calculate f and one and extract the value and proceed and if everything succeeds then it will allow you into sum. So sometimes using for loop will your code more readable. So we can try this code. Everything will result the same value. So the first one is the Kyoko, which is inefficient. And it will result sum of 24. And the next one is using pattern match, which is very verbose. It will result sum of 24 as well. And also using one map will get the same result. However, using four is the most clean one and operate successfully. And so uh, it is the last part of today's seminar. So from now on, we will implement very tiny, some kind of real world application. So we will implement a nice version of high cost chatbot. So and user uh, query the question using natural language like this it will ask it is asking the uh, arrival time of OLAP and uh, downtown bus which go to Okan and the program will uh, reply to this query like this and yeah we can use another name for the question and if the user said, ask about the wrong location, and it says that please say the proper stop. So from now on, we will implement this chatbot. So it is it has very simple structure. So the main function is query, and inside of query, we try to check that this question is related to some boss and it will go to query bus and in this function uh, we will check that this um, question is related to this bus and ask query stop function 
to check that if car is related to some stop and in the function, it will check the time and compare it to the current time and to the calculate the closest arrival time. Is a template of this program. So actually, uh, I already implemented boss class and top class and time class. So you do not need to look detail. However, it's boss has field name, so name of the boss and keys. And so when this key, one of the keys appear in the query, then we will think that the query is related to this bus. So this template is a very naive implementation, and I do not have any special knowledge about natural language processing, so we'll just check that it has key inside the query, is it, is it substring or not, and date um, which the bus run or not, so zero means Monday, and for example, OLAB will contain one, zero, one, two, Three and four in days because it does not run on weekend. And times it means when it um, depart from the starting point and stop is the list of stop where it supposed stop and stop has name as its field and also key to check that the query is related to stop. We have keys for the stop as well and time means the time interval between the departure from the starting point and this top. So it's simple and time contains hour and minute and you do not have to see this. It does offer the function to compare two times. And uh, in reality we will we we'll read all the data from some file or through some net network and parse them, however, uh, to make code simpler and not to deal with verbose features. So I just hard code every data in this program. So in this process list, we have two lists. The first one is OLAP, and the second one is bus from type to welcome station. OLAP has a name OLAP and it says key for OLAP. So OLAP and you cannot shuffle and some electric car or electric shuffle. And this is a base. It, it runs and departure time and this dog stops. And cafeteria source complex and face electro and it is very similar and medical science center, ice clinic and gate and dog fund and main hall. And this shuttle uh, depart from auditorium and go out from the college and go to CNU and open station and 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 common office. It is uh, raw data, which is hard coded in the code. And so this main function, uh, so we will take the query message by command line argument. So this main function will check that the command line argument is single. So it is it contains single if it contains single command line argument, then it will be the query message and pass it to the query function. And this normalize function normalize the query message like its name implies. So it does simply convert every character to lowercase and discard every some symbols, which is not alphabet or digit. So, the string is not list, but we can think string as a list of characters, so we can apply filter method to this string, and it will result another string. So let's try to implement this code. So of course, uh, it will call query, and query should be set return the 
total message about this coin message. So first we should normalize the given message. So we'll say this and a message and MSG, which is normalized message. And then we will check that uh, this message is related to some bus or not. So if this message is related to the bus, then query bus will return some net, some data, and if it's not related to this bus, then it will return none. So we should one map the query bus function to every element in the bus's list. We need one map in the query bus. And actually, if we define this query bus and query stop function as an acid function inside this query function, then we do not need to pass all this argument to this because it, the value will not be changed. However, uh, just um, for the better readability, I have implemented a separate function. So if you want, you can uh, define them as an acid function. And query bus and message day our minute will be passed directly and the boss will be passed to the query bus function. So if this query bus result none, then none will be discarded. And if it is sum, then the value will be extracted. And we save it to the results and check that result is empty or not. If result is empty, result is empty, we will print that you are asking wrong thing. So because user's question is not related to every bus, so we have to say that you should ask something related to the bus. So I'll just copy the error message. We will say you should ask about types of buses, and we will print the name of the buses. So we will map the name function to the buses, and this MK string name string uh, convert this list the string by using this as a uh, separator. So if you are uh, friendly to Python, then you should you can think about join functions in Python. So it's is the same thing. So if we do a make string with this kind of list by passing argument this one, then it will result string like this. And we pass this one, and it will oh, result like this. So it used this given string as a separation. So. It just print every name of the bus to uh, for the help if it's help message. And if not, we will simply uh, combine all the results by separating them by line break. So we finished to implement the query function. So it's time to implement the query bus function. The query bus should check that the query message is related to this bus or not. So of course, it will compare, so it will obtain keys of bus and one map. So it will pass a key and check that k is, the so key is substring of this message or not. So if this message contains this key, then we simply replace the key to the empty string and say that it is succeed, it succeed by returning some. So we should discard this uh, key part because, for example, when 
user want to ask about what what function does, then if we do not delete the key, then the resulting message might contain answer about open station. So we should delete the key to avoid such kind of thing happen. And if the key does not appear in the message, then it is just simply none. We do this and then so if this is an empty list, then we should return none because this query message is not related to this bus. So query message does not contain any key of this bus. And if it is real is some list which is not empty, then we can conclude that this query message is related to this bus. So we have to do something meaningful. So we just pass the, this query message to the query stop function. So query stop is something like this. So however, there is there exists multiple stops, so we should plan map to the bus stops of the bus. Plan map of query stop of message and day and hour and minute and bus are directly passed and yeah, it will be function, something like this, with this placeholder. And so it will be the result. Oh, and before that, we have to check that the day is valid day. So bus cannot run on the given day. So before calling this query stop function, we should check that it is the right day to take the bus. So let's check that if bus dot days dot contains day, then we will do this. If not, we should say that this is not the correct day to take the bus. So copy the error message. It will say the bus does not run today. And if result is empty, we should say that your bus name was correct, but your stop names are wrong. So we will say something like this. And If result is empty, then we'll say, please say the top of bus name correctly. And if it is not empty, we'll simply call mainstream. So we complete the query bus function, and the remaining part is query stop function. So First, we should check the key exists or not in the message. So was stop but keys. However, in this case, we do not need to remove the key from the message. It is enough to check the key exists or not. So case we'll use this exist function. So it will return true if more one or more elements um, satisfy this predicate, and it will become false if every element does not satisfy this predicate. So we'll check this one, and if this is true, then we have to compare time, and if it is not true, then it will return not. So 
we get the time uh, times of the top on the bus, the parking time of the bus, and map, which is increasing the timing cover of the stop. So we will calculate the time when the bus arrive at this top. And then we will filter with this time by compare the current time, compared to the current time. The time of current is our time of hour comma mean. And if the time is after the current time, then it will be valid time. So we will filter this list with this grid. So this is also the result. So if result is empty, then in this case it will be some value. So if result is empty, then uh, today the bus will not depart and arrive this stop more. So we will say no more bus today. And if not, we will set when the bus will arrive at this stop. So, but uh, printing all the time will to variables. So we will print only closest to three time by calling take function, which so so it will return at most three elements from the front of the list. Take three and print with a map. Also, uh, to inform that there are more buses or not, so if there is more than three bus, we will uh, print three dots to imply that there is more buses, and if there is more less than or equal to three buses, then we will finish the sentence with the single tier. Here, it's all the blank greater than three, then it will be three bots, and else it will be single box. So we finish it for implementation, I guess, and we can test it by calling it. So Scala, shuffle plus Scala. So when we do not test any common line arguments, but it tells that there is some error like that, and we should find it. Is succeeded to com compile and create the error message that you should pass the question as an argument. And I'll have from two equal uh, half. And uh, actually, I hard coded the current time and day here. So Washing that stays Tuesday and 10 a.m. So then it will say that Olaf will arrive at 11 at 10 18, 10, 10, 8, and 10, 10, 10, 48. And also we can send a query about open shuffle. Like this. Hmm. Maybe I did something wrong. <laughs> yeah. So this thing should be prevented by removing that. So because I should pass 
H instead of massage here. So let's fold H to the kind of C. Then, yeah, it'll work properly because the key is removed and the query is correctly um, handled. So it's more comfortable to arrive at that point. That's 10, 9, 11, 9, and 59. And if we ask some question completely non related, then it'll say you should ask about process. If we say the stop incorrectly, then it will complain that we should say the stop correctly. So we implemented it successfully, and the only remaining one is summary. Now we today we saw Scala standard library, which offers many useful functions. Um, also, we saw for statement or for loop of Scala, which is very functional and readable, uh, offers readable way to write code. And we use functional style to implement the um, tiny application. So this, this seminar is the last seminar before the midterm exam, and there will be some more interesting topics after midterm exam. So I hope to see you again after the midterm exam. Thank you.